my thoughts about simulation in Houdini. Hello everyone, my name is Carl Drifter, a Houdini artist from China. Previously on my philosophy of Houdini, I introduced my learning methods and concepts about Houdini. Here are simple conclusions in case you did not watch it. I make a series of Houdini tutorials named the Taoism of Houdini, which includes every note and technique I know about Houdini. Taoism, the Chinese traditional philosophy, emphasizes the extents. Anything complicated comes from simplicity, so don't get lost by the complex appearance. Anything complex is made of simplicity, so try to divide complexity and master it one by one. The IPO formula, import, process, and output. This is the very core pattern of Houdini structure which repeat again and again to build up a very complex network. Point and Voxel are the two basic elements in Houdini, which are the containers for data indeed. The core functions of nodes are creating data or changing data. It's all about data flow under the hood. Again, for the Taoism of Houdini, my purpose is to make it simplified and as well as unified, so that I could figure out the essence of Houdini. In Houdini, we have several ways to make an object move. Key phrase, expression, charts, and simulation. Let's think a while. Let's think a while. What's the major difference of simulation? Given the rule, simulation has the memory of last frame. It calculates the result of current frame based on last frame. So here is the difference among them. For keyframe animation, it follows the animation curve. For expression, rules defined by expression. And for simulation, accumulated result based on rules. Let's switch to Houdini for a demonstration. Here I create a sphere and primitive type I set to primitive. And let's open the geometry spreadsheet. So here we can see it only includes one point. And I add a transform node in the translate parameter y axis. I assign keyframe. So we can see that the sphere is animated. We can tell from the position attribute, the y axis, we can open the animation curve. This is the animation curve. So we use key phrase to drive the animation based on this animation curve. So at the very first frame, the sphere is on the original point, zero. But the next frame, it will jump up to 100 meters and then fall down to negative 100 meters. So this is the feature of animation. It only cares about this animation curve. And another way to make fear move is use expression. Here I create a point warp. That's it. And I use random. Here I use position to drive the position import. And then use here 3D vector import to 3D vector output. Unchecked clamp position to integer. Check. Add. Add frame into position and then drive the random. So in different frame, we will get the different result of random. Follow it. We add the result of random to position. Here we see the result. Yeah, we can see that the sphere is moving. The position of this sphere is always between 0 and 1. This is another way to make an object move, use expression. And the third way is use simulation. Here I create a solver. I use the same random to drive this sphere, so I copy the point wall. Connect it to previous frame. When we play this, you can see that the same random functions in solver, we can see the sphere is going up in this direction. It's no longer drift around the original point. So this is the difference. I think these two examples shows the difference between 
simulation and expression. For expression, it only cares about current freight, so it does not have any memory about last freight or previous freight. But in solver or simulation, the, the result of current freight is based on last freight or previous freight. So we can see that the sphere is accumulated, although use the same random function. So in the very first frame, maybe it becomes this position, and another frame, it becomes more, and the third frame, the fourth frame, we can see that it accumulates the number. So this is called simulation. And also we can see from the timeline that there is a blue light. Means that in this cache, you have to weigh the blue light to cache. Simulation is the most brilliant modular in Houdini, but what's it all about when it comes to your mind? You may say that simulation is all about popped, flipped, rigid body, pyro, valent, hair, and fur, wire, soft body, etc. etc. Or you may say that simulation is all about forces, collisions, constraint, solvers, scripting. They are all correct from different aspects of view. And to me, the simulation is the visualization of movement. The key is all about velocity. In industrial society, we get used to division of labor and organize things into different catalogs. It's natural that beginners may believe that pop is for particle simulation only, pyro for volumetric, flick for liquid, rigid body for destruction, and valent for cross simulation. Well, as a matter of fact, this is part of true. First, in the real world, we normally need to combine more than two types of solvers to simulate a real phenomenon. Houdini offers a multi-solver to connect these different solvers to work together. Second, even for single type simulation, we often use other simulation data to help, such as using the pyro simulated velocity to drive the particle movement, or use pop force to control rigid body simulation. Last but not least, valence system in Houdini 19, the most promising modular I believe, can do cross, hair, gray, as well as liquid simulation at the same time. Therefore, we are no longer restricted to certain modular, but free to exchange data as we want. So simulation are not and should not be separated, but how could we unify all of them? As I mentioned before, Boyd and Warshall are the two basic elements in Houdini. So in simulation, the two basic types are point based simulation and volume or VDB-based simulation. For popped rigid body, they are just point based simulation. For pyro, it is the volume or VDB based simulation. For flip, it is the mix of point and volume based simulation. Even we have two different basic elements, we often extract data from one to drive another one. The most common data we use is velocity. The other aspect of simulation is about forces, collisions, constraints, shovers, limits, and scratching, etc. And we have thousands of nodes and methods to control simulation. But again, all these elements change velocity directly or indirectly. Here for the normal forces. Acceleration equals to force divide max. Velocity equals to original velocity at acceleration times time. For jack or wing forces, push the velocity to the target velocity. Collisions change the direction of velocity. Refraction of collider normal. Constraint and limits directly change the velocity or position. Here, let me switch to Houdini for a simple demonstration. So here is a very basic setup. So when I play, we can see that there is a ball bouncing to the right side. This is a very basic and simple setup for a rigid body simulation or the pop simulation, right? So what did I do in these setups? Sphere. I create a sphere, use primitive type, so that we only have one point. And I make it smaller. 
and then I use transform. Make it five meters up. I gave this sphere the initial velocity, forces, and mass. That achievable angle. V at V equals to set. Zero, zero, and two in axis. So here, the sphere gets a velocity, zero, zero, two. So we can tell from this geometry spreadsheet. Then I give it a force downward. V at force equals to set zero, negative six, zero. A max equals to one point zero. Yeah. So we can tell from this geometry spreadsheet, we get a force, max, and initial velocity. And then I give a solver. Here on the previous frame, I take attribute angle. Velocity will change the position. Here's V at P plus equals to V at V times at time in. At time in means time increment. So that we can use the correct time to do the simulation. We get the acceleration vector. A equals to V at force divide F at max. Then we change the velocity V at V plus equal A times at time in. Let's jump back. We can see that the sphere is falling. Okay, so here is what I mean. When we get a velocity and we get a force, force change the acceleration, and acceleration will change the velocity. Finally, the velocity will change position. For simulation, this is a very basic and key function in Houdini. And then what about collision? Here I build a grid. Make it bigger. And give it more point. And then add a normal. Switch to point level. So we can see that there is a point normal 0, 1, 0 is pointing upward. Connect to the second import. Here I add a point walk. Put it to the input 2. I make it simplify. Because we need to tell when the sphere is colliding with the ground or the grid. But we know that the ground or grid is at the original, so the y is 0. So if the sphere is falling close to 0, it means that it will collide with the grid. So here, better to float. And we extract the y position. Compare. If the y position of the sphere is less or equal than maybe 0 0.1, so two-way switch. If it's 4, it will use the original velocity. But if it's 2, we have to change the direction of the sphere based on the collider, the grid normal, right? I have to get the grid normal. We use point cloud. Connect to the second import for the grid. And position, connect to the position. And then PC filter.
we need to get the normal from the grid. That reflect. We connect the velocity to the direct. And here is a normalized normal. So we add a normalized. So we ensure there is nothing wrong. We connect it. Here the result we connect to input 1 and then the result connect to the velocity. So I use reflect node to change the direction of the velocity based on the grid normal. And then in PC open, the search radius I make it bigger. So let's go back. You can see the sphere is bouncing. Now we can add more detail. So each bounce, I think the sphere will lock some energies in real life. In the the result of the refract, we can multiply a percentage, like 80 percentage means that it will lose 20 percentage each bounce. So here I use multiply, constant. Multiplier use 0 0.8, means each bounce it will have 80 percent energy left. Yeah, so we can see that it, after each bounce, it's go less higher. So through this very simple demonstration, we can see that first, if we use force, actually it will change the velocity, and then the velocity will change the position based on time, right? Another thing is for collision. The collision we get will change the direction of the velocity. Also, it will change the magnitude or the speed of the velocity because energy loss, right? Of course, you can set the velocity to zero if it collides with some certain glider. So this is how we control velocity. So let me change to another example. Yeah, poly wire. Yeah, we can see a lot of wire or hairs growing. So what happened in this setup? Here I make a boss, so make it 20 meters, and then I create a VDB. Use vector float, and the name is velocity. Well, use VDB active, switch to reference, so I can reference the boss to activate this VDB. And then I use a volume warp. This is the key of this simulation. So this is the volume warp. So here, I build a very simple setup. First, I use the position to subtract the original. Here, I create a vector. You can see the input number is 0, 0, 0. It's in the original. And then I normalize. So we got the direction. So I just disconnect the noise temporarily. Here, I use the point from volume to get this point. And then volume trail to visualize. We can see that the velocity is pointing outward from the original. This is why I did use this the chat methods and normalize. And then I add the noise. I create a volume velocity. So here we can see the trail. Same press noise. Frequency 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. And amplitude is 5. And back. Here I create this velocity. And then I create a sphere at the original and scatter some points, 1000. Point walk. I create some noise and then fill up to color. Volume noise, the chat. And then we get 0 0.2 to 1. So we get this color. Rango no to use my ID to install at PT Long. So we get a custom attribute, my ID. So we can see. Shower. Here I use attribute Rango. V at P at equals to V at V. So I just add V directly into P position. And then there is a point walk. This is the second import. Here I connect the volume into the second input of the solver. I use volume sample vector node to 
Gap the velocity. We use the primitive number zero to get the well velocity, and then we multiply multiplier. Another one is I get a CD to drive the speed. Also, I use random to make a little random for the velocity. So here I just write together. I add this result to the velocity and multiply constant 0 0.5. So here I can see the movement of the point. For the white point, it will move faster. And for the gray point, it will move slower. And then I add a trail. I add an add node used by groups, by attribute. Attribute name, use my custom attribute, my ID. So attribute delete, I delete the color. So we can see this, this is the growth of the line. And smooth a little bit. For example, enable curl U attributes. So we got the gradient of each curve. And then based on this curl UV attribute, I create a P scale attribute. With RAM and poly wire to make a mesh and use the P scale to drive this wire radius. So this is the result we get. This is a very simple result as well as a very simple setup. The most important or the key element is the volume warps. It means the velocity, how we set up the velocity. Here, if I change the position, so we can see from the preview velocity, it's pointing downward. And we move the sphere up by 9. So we play again. So we can see that the light is growing downward. So through this example, I want to show that how you generate or use your velocity is very, very important. IPO in simulation. In simulation, I still use the IPO formula, input, process, and output. Import, initial data, often created in shop. Processed, stop setup. Output, post process, often in shop. I found out that many beginners only care about the process part, but neglect the import and output which means that they spend lots of time in dot -like work adjusting all kinds of different parameters. But most of the times, it doesn't work. So by today's topic, we can see that the initial data or the initial velocity is really important for simulation. What is velocity and how to get or change velocity? Velocity is a vector, which means that it can divide it into two things, direction and magnitude or we call it speed. So when we say changing velocity, we can change from these two aspects. So another question is that how to get or change velocity in Houdini. Here are the popular methods I use. Number one, noise. This is the super useful and powerful path in simulation. And I believe noise is a super powerful weapon for other Houdini artists too, even in procedural modeling. Simulation. So sometimes, so most of the time, we can extract velocity from other types of simulation, like parallel simulation, like flex simulation, or valence simulation. So we can extract velocity from different types of simulation. Number three is force, collision, name it, and it's wrangle or wolf, just like scripting. You can change the velocity directly, or you can set condition. And the last one is read time. So when we say post-process for velocity, the very useful node is return node. Uh, here is the three image I free simulation do this fresh. First image we can get a lot of detail with noise, but the structure is not very clear. And the second one we can see there is two maze brush with several details. And the last one if we got this uh, glass of Y that we get a spread angle. The setup of these three images are almost the same. I only change a very small part of it, the import velocity. So let's jump to Houdini to have a look. Here I create a particle fluid tank. And particle separation, I use the fluid objects to drive this particle separation. And this is the size. 
and I'll initial. Another thing, I create a box. Use poly bevel to got the bevel edge. And then VDB from polygon and transfer to polygon. This is the method I use normally to create this even the divide boxes. Then create a normal with some point and use a mountain shock. Actually, it's a attribute noise node to create this noise and more detail and smooth it a little bit. I use a rest shock to add a rest attribute and create a transform. So this transform we create an animation. Yeah. Going up with some rotation. Yeah, it's very simple. And here I use the collision source. Yeah. For the volume parts, I connect this voxel size with my dot network. Here comes my collision VDB. And another part is for this geometry. I made three options. One is I connect it directly. Another thing I could I create a point velocity. And then I use a point valve to customize velocity. So let's check what's the different result. So here I switch to number one. It's more zero. So use the original collider object. And here is stop let work. Let's go and check. Very simple. Only a free object, a free solver, and a gravity. Here is the steady object. Check this use deforming geometry because it's animated box, right? Here I use volume sample to connect this out collision VDB. For fleet object, this is the separation 0 0.0.1. For initial data, I enable add viscosity attribute. And in physics, the viscosity I set to 0 0.2. In flip over, I create mix, min and max subsets 2 and 4. In the particle motion, I add ID. Receding, I in, enable receipt particles and set particle per voxel 16 and surface over sample to 2. Volume motion, I switch velocity transfer to APIC. Volume limits, I connect it to the particle fluid tank. Collision. For more or details glide, I use the collision super sampling and samples per axis three times. Viscosity enable viscosity and also enable solve viscosity with adaptivity. This will make your simulation faster. Also surface tension, I make it surface tension two and nothing else. So let's check the result. The original one. So we can see the splash is go very high and explosion like this. It does not have certain shades we want and also it will climb the boundary. So this is not what we want. But most of times we cannot change the animation of this box. Like we are in the actual projects. I think most of the animation cannot be changed because of the camera, because of the screens, because of the feeling of the movement. Here I create a point velocity. Default value to 0, 0, 0, and then I add a curl noise. Use the scales to 2.82. Okay, let me check here. Here I enable the original velocity. We can see that the velocity is so huge and pointing outward. But when we switch this point velocity, we can see that it's, it's much lower. Also, we can use the coil angles to change this direction. Yeah, you can see that. And curl noise. And this is world size. So let me change to the input 2. Yeah, we can get more these details splash. And also, it's not too high or close to the boundary. So we only change the velocity to get this result and nothing else changed. Let me check this, the third import. Let's check here. This is my custom velocity. Go inside. So I used the rest attribute I created before. And here I set the component to it means the y axis into zero means I don't care about the y axis, I only care about the f and z axis. 
Here, I create a normalize to get this vector. Means that it's pointing outward. Neglect the y axis. And then I use this to mix with 0, 1, 0. So it's our mix with our use 0 0.5. So I can use one to create here. So I can adjust this angle. And we got this direction. And then here I use the rest attribute again to drive the volume noise as a chest to get this thing. Velocity. Here I got this velocity. It means that certain part is white and another part is black. I use this thing to drive zero one to determine some area is faster and then multiply to velocity. This setup we make more uniform velocity. Uh, so for simulation we can get a more uniform result. The third option. Here you can see that we have two to three splashes with a little detail when we turn into polygon. Yeah. So we can see this one. So through this example, I want to show two things. One is the IPO formulas. Please don't only focus on the process part. Don't pay too much time in the dot .NET world. Too. Sometimes you have to pay more time outside, like the initial part or the process part. You can do a lot of work in the import and output. Another thing is that we can see only change the velocity. We can get very different result. Finally, let's check out the render setting. I get the bubble points based on the vorticity. I, I just delete all the points at which vorticity is less than 80. And then use the sphere to copy it here. Also, I set in the p scale based on the vorticity and use some random ID to get the randomization. And output bubble. And when outside, I create a nose to rotation the bubble. And also, I add a background. This camera, let's go into the camera angle. And also use the environment light. I use HDR to light up the scene. Also use air light for the key light. For material, I use the principal shader. I just choose the preset. Use the tinted glass. For surface, I set the transparency color to blue. And water one, I use the same method, but I change the transparency to darker blue. Also the emission, I use the emission colors to uh, reddish. I changed uh, this one for bubble. And the ground, I create UV and use a bound map to create a little detail. And for the renderer, I use Kama and setting the pixel samples to 256 and enable the refresh limits and refresh limits to 12. And light quality, I set the lighting quality to 2 for holding 19. The camera is ready for production use. It's really fast for preview. Set random to and play. This is the great render result. I think it's quite satisfactory. Finally, thank SciFS and everyone, and hope you all have a happy journey with Houdini.